Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. Jin of Cairo. In the heart of Cairo's sprawling Khan El Khalili Bazaar, amidst the labyrinth of stalls bursting with spices, textiles, and myriad treasures, a peculiar shop tucked away in a shadowy alley caught the eye of Sarah, a young American tourist with a keen interest in Middle Eastern folklore. The shop was adorned with ancient amulets, scrolls, and artifacts, each holding stories of days long past. As she browsed the dusty shelves, a glint of light from a beautifully intricate lamp caught her attention. It was unlike the typical genie lamps peddled to tourists. This one was older, its bronze surface etched with symbols that whispered of the old magic of the desert and skies. The shopkeeper, an elderly man with knowing eyes, watched her with a faint, unsettling smile. Be wary, child, he said in a raspy voice as he noticed her interest. This is no ordinary lamp. It is said to hold a djinn, not the benevolent kind, but one of mischief and malevolence. Intrigued and slightly amused by what seemed like a theatrical sales pitch, Sarah purchased the lamp, dismissing the warning as part of the charm of this exotic place. Back in her hotel room, the allure of the ancient lamp was too strong to resist. Sarah rubbed it, half-jokingly, expecting nothing more than to polish its surface. To her astonishment, a cloud of smoke began to seep from the spout, quickly enveloping the room in a thick, perfumed haze. From the mist emerged a figure, towering and formidable, with eyes that burned like the desert sun at midday. I am Kaisar of the Jinn, bound to this lamp by ancient magic, the creature intoned, its voice echoing against the walls, resonant with the power of untold years. You have released me, and thus you are granted three wishes. But be warned, every wish comes with a price, hidden in the shadows of its making. Excited yet nervous, Sarah made her first wish, a desire to understand and speak all the languages of the world. It was granted with a mere flick of Kaisar's hand, and suddenly her mind buzzed with the knowledge of countless languages, ancient and modern. It was exhilarating, but the rush of voices in her head soon became overwhelming, a cacophony that she couldn't silence. For her second wish, Sarah asked for the wealth to never worry about her future again. In an instant, her modest bank account burgeoned with a fortune in gold. But when she tried to spend it, she found that each coin brought misfortune to those she dealt with, turning her dream into a curse. With each wish, the Jin's smile grew wider, his delight in the unfolding chaos apparent. Sarah realized too late that the Jin's gifts were twisted, fulfilling her desires in ways that brought only grief and suffering. As she braced herself to make her third and final wish, she pondered how to undo the chaos without further disaster. But before she could speak, a knock at the door shattered the moment. The hotel staff had noticed the unusual activities in her room, the strange noises and lights under the door. Torn between the looming threat of the djinn and the immediate concern of the hotel security, Sarah felt trapped in a web of her own making, her final wish, her only escape. But as she turned to face Kaisar, ready to speak, she realized that the djinn had plans of his own, his dark eyes gleaming with mischief and malice. As the door burst open, Sarah knew that her next words might save her or condemn her further, the true power of the djinn yet to be fully revealed. As the door flew open, Sarah faced the concerned hotel staff, their eyes wide at the sight of the swirling mists and the imposing figure of Kaisar standing in the center of the room. Their reactions ranged from disbelief to fear, and the security guard instinctively reached for his radio to call for more help. Kaisar, his presence now fully revealed, turned his fierce gaze upon them, and the room fell eerily silent, as if his will alone quelled the chaos around him. Leave us, Kaisar commanded, in a voice that seemed to resonate from the very walls. The staff, unable to resist the authoritative tone of his voice, backed away slowly, closing the door behind them, leaving Sarah alone once again with the djinn. Now, child, Kaisar continued, turning back to Sarah with a sly grin that sent shivers down her spine. You have one wish remaining. Choose wisely. 
for as you have seen, the consequences of your desires are not to be taken lightly. Sarah's mind raced as she considered her options. The first two wishes had brought nothing but misery and chaos. She needed to rectify her mistakes, but how? Every scenario she imagined seemed to have potential pitfalls, each wish a double-edged sword. Drawing a deep breath, Sarah looked up at the djinn. His eyes flickered with the anticipation of her decision, enjoying the game he orchestrated at her expense. I wish to undo my previous wishes, she said finally, her voice steady despite the pounding of her heart. Return everything to how it was before I made them. Kaisar's smile faltered for a moment, his eyes narrowing. Very well, he replied after a pause that felt like an eternity. But know this, the reversal of wishes does not simply erase their effects. All that has transpired will have left its mark upon the world, and some shadows linger long after the light returns. With a wave of his hand, the knowledge of countless languages drained from Sarah's mind, leaving a hollow silence where once there had been a cacophony of voices. The gold that had filled her accounts vanished, but the misfortunes it had caused remained, a series of unfortunate events that continued to unfold like dominoes in the darkness. As the room cleared of the magical mist, Kaisar's form began to dissipate, his task completed, his binding to the lamp reasserted. Remember, human, he whispered as his form became smoke. Every choice has its shadow. You cannot escape them forever. The lamp clattered to the floor, once again an ordinary, albeit intricately designed object. Sarah stood alone in the room, the weight of her experiences pressing down upon her. Relief mixed with a profound sense of unease. Had she truly corrected her course, or had she merely set other unknown events into motion? Outside, the sun began to set, casting long shadows across the streets of Cairo. Sarah knew she needed to leave, to get away from the memories and shadows of the room. But as she packed her belongings, she felt a strange pull a whisper of wind that seemed to call her name. Drawn inexplicably back to the lamp, she hesitated. The djinn was gone, bound once more to his ancient prison. Yet the allure of the unknown, the mysteries of magic and consequence, beckoned her. With the lamp in her hand, Sarah stepped out of the hotel room, her future unwritten, and the streets of Cairo sprawling before her, a maze of light and shadow, each alley holding the promise of deeper secrets yet to be uncovered. As the streets of Cairo swallowed her, Sarah's mind was a turmoil of doubt and fear, constantly glancing at the seemingly innocent lamp in her hand. She felt its weight as both a physical and metaphorical burden, a reminder of the dark power it held. Deciding she could no longer bear it, Sarah resolved to rid herself of the lamp in a way that no one else could retrieve it and suffer as she had. Under the cloak of night, she made her way to the Nile, the river's vast, dark waters, flowing silently through the ancient city. The lamp felt unnaturally heavy as she approached the embankment, its metal cold and almost pulsating in her grip, as if aware of her intentions. Reaching the water's edge, she drew back her arm to throw the lamp as far into the river as she could. But just as she swung her arm forward, a gust of wind swept through, chilling her to the bone and startling her into a misstep. Her foot slipped on the slick stone of the embankment, throwing her off balance. With a cry, Sarah fell forward, the lamp slipping from her grasp, but not into the river. Instead, it smashed against the stones, the impact breaking it open and releasing a surge of swirling black smoke. From the smoke, Kaisar emerged once again, his form more terrifying than ever, his eyes blazing with fury. Foolish human, he thundered his voice echoing off the water and shaking the air itself. Did you truly believe you could dispose of me so easily? Frozen in fear, Sarah could only watch as the djinn grew larger, his shadow stretching ominously across the Nile's surface. I am bound no longer by the constraints of your simple wishes or the confines of that lamp, Kaisar declared, his voice a vortex pulling at her soul. You have freed me entirely with your recklessness, and for that, you shall provide my first taste of freedom. The air around Sarah grew dense, pressing in on her with the weight of centuries of trapped malice now unleashed. She tried to run, but her legs wouldn't move, as if the very stones of Cairo held her fast. 
Kaisar's form blurred into a mass of shadows, and as he descended upon her, the last thing Sarah saw were those burning eyes, promising an eternity of torment. Her scream was lost in the roar of the wind, and then, suddenly, there was silence. The embankment was empty, with only the gentle lapping of the Nile against the shore and a broken lamp lying discarded by the water's edge. The disappearance of the young American tourist became a topic of hushed speculation in Cairo. Some said she had fled, overcome by the mysteries she had dabbled in too deeply. Others whispered of a dark figure seen near the Nile on the night she vanished, a figure that seemed more myth than man. And as the years passed, the legend of the Jinn of Cairo began, a tale told in cautious whispers of a spirit not bound by lamp nor wishes, roaming the world free, its wrath as boundless as the desert sands, its gaze as piercing as the desert sun. And in the shadows of the city, in the murmur of the river, some say you can still hear the faint echo of a woman's scream, swept away by the winds of a thousand regrets. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video.